In our final video in the series of ROP, we look at the concept of aggregation and composition. Now, we've already talked a lot about inheritance, which you can think of as an is-a relationship. For example, a cat and a dog is an animal. In a similar way, a plane, car or train is a form of transport. But inheritance is not the only way of looking at how we can tie objects and classes together in ROP. We also have association. Now, broadly speaking, association can be thought of as a has-a relationship. For example, a student has a teacher. A teacher has a student. A coach has a player. A player has a coach. The difference here is that these items are completely independent of each other. The student can exist without a teacher and vice versa. Aggregation is a more specific form of association, where a class is a collection or container of other classes. The contained classes do not have a strong dependency on the container class. If the container class is destroyed, the associated classes still exist. In this example, we have a head of department collection or container class. It has an association with the classroom teacher class. Many classroom teachers can belong to a single head of department, but there is not a strong dependency. If the head of department class is destroyed, the classroom teachers can still exist. This is signified by the clear diamond symbol. Composition is a much stronger form of association. Where a class is a collection or container of other classes, the contained classes do have a strong dependency on the container class. And if the container class is destroyed, the associated classes are also destroyed. In this example, we have a contained class called building associated with the classroom class. The classroom class is part of or belongs to the building class. In this situation, if we destroy the building class, the classrooms cannot exist on their own. And this is signified by the solid diamond symbol. So now you can see we have different ways of associating classes and objects beyond simple inheritance. On the left, we have what we consider weaker association, where classes are associated, but they can exist independently of each other. We have aggregation, where there is a stronger association, but classes can exist independently still of their container class. And on the right, we have composition, the strongest type of relationship. Here, if a container class is destroyed, the classes contained within it are also destroyed. It is also important to understand the three design principles of object-oriented programming. One, favour composition over inheritance. Two, encapsulate what varies. And three, program to an interface, not implementation. So let's look at each of those in turn. Principle one, favour composition over inheritance. So in general, composition is preferable to using inheritance. And this is because composition allows for greater flexibility. It's less rigid than relationships that exist under inheritance. An object might be composed of several other objects, but in a real world situation, it wouldn't make sense to say they inherited its characteristics. For example, here we have a strong association using composition. We have a building which has a door, has a classroom and has a corridor. The class is made up or contains three other objects or classes. We can see a defined class for building with its own public procedures, methods and private attributes. And we can see how it's made up of nine other objects. Principle two, encapsulate what varies. 
If something varies, it should be pulled out and put into its own class, known as encapsulation. Encapsulation reduces the need for testing and maintenance. Designers should take properties and methods and subdivide them down into as many classes as required to reflect a real-world scenario. Let's say we're modelling a school environment and designing a program to handle the data of everyone at that school, including students, teaching staff and others. We may well start with a simple class such as person. We can see that this class won't be specific enough to cover everyone at the school. So we should attempt to encapsulate what varies. There are two very broad groups of people who attend schools. There are students who are there to learn and employees who are there to work. It's unlikely we'd stop there. The principle of encapsulating what varies requires you to keep going. Another logical step might be during the design to split the employee class down into two further categories, teachers and non-teaching staff. We keep breaking the classes down, making sure to encapsulate what varies as far as is sensible. The final principle was programmed to an interface, not implementation. This means focusing your design on what the code is doing, not how the code does what it is doing. We can have many different classes or objects that all need to share a similar set of messages. Yet at the same time, those classes may have no relationship whatsoever. To solve this, we can program an interface, a collection of abstract methods that have no actual code written for them. Specific classes can then implement this interface, adding the how code to each method. In this example, we have an abstract interface called switches. We know that all switches will need a method to turn them on and off. Other generic methods may include setting a timer and getting the remaining time left on a timer. However, there could be thousands of different implementations of this interface. None of these need to be related, but nevertheless, they will each implement the switches interface. This example pseudocode would give us a concrete implementation of the switches interface. The specific code required for the heating control class would be added at this point. Remember, an interface is purely a declaration of capability. There's no actual code implemented there. An interface can't do anything without an implementing class. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What do we mean by encapsulate what varies, favor composition over inheritance, program to interface, not implementation? That's everything you officially need to know for the exam. If you want to stick around for another 30 seconds, we're just going to go slightly beyond the specification. So let's be honest here and talk to you about the truth of OOP. So in the late 90s, object-oriented programming became a dominant programming paradigm. Today, however, OOP is actually considered a rather bloated system, creating programs that are difficult to maintain, especially with larger projects. Its creator, Alan Kay, never intended for it to evolve like it has, insisting that the essential ingredients were simply message passing, encapsulation and dynamic binding. In fact, the very man who coined the term OOP never considered inheritance and subclasses, polymorphism, to be core concepts. OOP is now giving way to functional programming, which is considered to produce safer and more stable code that is easier to maintain.